Hello, have you ever wondered, do blind birds can navigate? Welcome to Monthly Mailbag, where we answer your science questions from the comment section. Saris F. Themiotis asked this one after watching Jim Akluli's discourse on quantum biology. It's a fantastic question, and I'm not sure there really is a definitive answer to it, but let's dive in and see if we can peck away at an answer. We all know birds are amazing navigators. Think of the massive migrations of Canadian geese, thousands of kilometers every year across North America, or the homing ability of pigeons. In fact, pigeons are probably the best studied and most impressive navigators, so let's focus on them for today. Pigeons can find their way back across hundreds of kilometers of totally unfamiliar territory. How do they do it? It turns out to be pretty complicated. And scientists think pigeons use a whole toolbox of senses and strategies, many, but not all of which rely on functional eyes. But first, to understand what's going on, let's break down navigation. There are two key parts of navigation. Determining where you are in space, a map, and determining which direction is which, a compass. You then need to constantly update those two things to make sure you are where you think you are and you're going where you think you're going. So let's imagine dropping a bird off at the Eiffel Tower in Paris, 342 kilometers from the RI in London. How will it get home? Our bird's never been to Paris, so there's no chance of it navigating just by visual landmarks it might recognize, which is what we think pigeons usually do. So how is he going to get home? First, the compass we talked about. Birds use two major sources of information, the position of the sun and the stars in the sky and magnetoreceptors in their eyes. Both of these mechanisms depend on working eyes, at least to some extent, so it's not looking very good for Ceres' blind birds. The sun can act as a compass for pigeons because they have a very accurate internal clock, so they can tell which direction is which based on the position of the sun or the stars in the sky. Scientists have been able to test this ability by artificially making birds change time zones. They turn lights on in the middle of the night, and they turn them off during the day. Birds that have been time-shifted like this will get their directions wrong, but not randomly, they'll get them wrong in a very predictable way. For example, if home is due west and it's 6 p.m. in their head, then they'll expect the sun to be, let's say, 20 degrees above the western horizon, so they'll fly towards it. But if they've been time-shifted so that it's actually 10 a.m. and the sun has recently risen, then they'll fly east in exactly the wrong direction. But if it's cloudy, then even time-shifted birds navigate just fine. So we think the pigeon's first option is this sun compass, and then they resort to using their other senses, including magnetoreceptors in their eyes. Now this is cool. There's a type of protein called cryptochrome that lives in the retinas of a lot of birds, and it's reactive to blue light. So what scientists think happens is that when blue light hits cryptochrome, it becomes active, and it'll remain so for a little while until it deactivates again. The amount of time that it stays active is affected by the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. And cryptochrome is also known to affect the sensitivity of the retina. To see what that might look like for a bird, let's go to the roof. So what scientists think happens is that when birds look south, dark patches align over their vision, kind of like this. As they look around, the patches move too, giving a constant sense of compass direction. We also have cryptochrome in our eyes, but the molecule that let it stay active for long enough to be affected by the magnetic field, superoxide, it's toxic, so the antioxidants in our eyes lock it down too quickly. Researchers think we've traded longevity for magnetovision. So our pigeon in Paris is going to be able to orient itself pretty well, as long as it's not blind, Ceres. It knows where north is, but how does it know that London is north? How does it build itself a map? It's still kind of an open question, but we do have some more clues. Uh, it's either more magnetoreception or odor maps. Apart from the cryptochrome in their eyes, pigeons also have magnetite, which is a biologically formed iron-rich material that reacts to magnetic fields in their heads. Exactly where is still a matter of some debate. It could be in the skin on the top of their beak, it could be near their nostrils, or between their brain and their skull. But in any case, we're pretty sure it sends signals to the brain via the trigeminal nerve which is the same one that controls the eyes, so if Ceres' blind birds have nerve damage, even this method won't be of much help. Tiny particles of magnetite get aligned to the Earth's magnetic field, just like needles in this demonstration from our museum. The mini compasses will align to the strong magnetic field imposed by this bar magnet. So imagine the pigeon's beak is full of micrometer-sized compasses, each a fraction of the width of a human hair. So that works fine as a compass, but it can also work as a map. The way they all get aligned will tell the bird where it is on Earth because of a concept called a gradient map. 
The intensity of the Earth's magnetic field varies with distance to the poles, being stronger near the poles and weaker near the equator. So that gives latitude information. But the field also varies in inclination. It's vertical at the poles and horizontal near the equator. And it's the combination of these two things where the bird can build a bi-coordinate system. Intensity and inclination vary and across the world, and there's a unique set of values for any given point on Earth. The bird builds up a feeling for the magnetic field at home and how it changes when it moves in various directions. It then extrapolates that local map out, assuming the pattern will continue to cover the rest of the Earth. It turns out that this magnetite map probably only works on a very local level, up to 15 kilometers or so, or at very large scales, 50 kilometers or more. Because in small areas, variation caused by the metal content of underlying rocks is too localized to be extrapolated very far. And in contrast, the gradual change in the Earth's magnetic field can only be reliably sensed at very long distances. There's also some suggestion that pigeons can extrapolate familiar prevailing smells in similar ways to build up an olfactory map. But it's unlikely that this can create the kind of gradient map that could reach as far as Paris, so it's probably restricted to creating more of a pungent mosaic of the bird's hometown. Useful when the journey is nearly over, but not so great for setting a course 300 kilometers away. So to wrap this all together, let's return to our brave pigeon's voyage. He sets off from the Eiffel Tower and starts looping around, getting his bearings. He quickly realizes he doesn't recognize anything around him in this strange and foreign land. So he checks the position of the sun against his internal clock and cross-references that with the perception of the Earth's magnetic field to calibrate his compass. He has a sniff, but doesn't recognize any of the cheesy smells of France, so extrapolates what he knows about the large-scale gradients in the Earth's magnetic field to place him on a basic mental map and sets off roughly in the right direction. As he crosses the channel, small cues from his olfactory map confirm he's heading in the right direction as he catches the unmistakable pong of England. He speeds up, he hits the Thames, and he can see the shard poking up in the heart of London in the distance. He picks up those familiar tinglings of the local magnetic field variation, and in no time, he's found his way back to the warm embrace of the Royal Institution. But he used his vision and his eyes an awful lot there. So to answer the question once and for all, do blind birds can navigate? No. Probably not. Thanks for watching. If you have a science question that you always wanted answered, make sure to pop it in the comments below. And if you enjoy our videos, make sure to subscribe for a new one every week.